We have just built and released an exciting tool for the Pico 8 community, the Color Palette Studio. Let me give you the tour. Step one, select your colors. By default, all 32 colors are selected so that you can study the full palette available to help you whittle it down to the 16 you want. Underneath, we have buttons where you can toggle the color numbers to help you identify them, quick buttons for selecting or deselecting all colors, and a random 16 button if you're feeling lucky or just browsing for inspiration. Your selected colors will appear just below in the order that you select them. Hover your mouse over the colors to show their numbers. Step 2. Color Analysis First, it gives you a color wheel ordered by hue so that you can see the gradients of your colors next to each other and get a better feel for them all. Hover your mouse on any of these displays to see the color numbers. Second, color rings. Just like the wheel, we ordered the colors by hue, but also grouped them by brightness. The brightest colors in the center, midtones in the middle, then dark tones, and the outermost ring is black. This helps you compare neighboring colors both by hue and brightness level. It also gives you a good idea if your palette is heavily bright, dark, or a balanced mix. Third, we provide another way to study the hue and brightness on a traditional graph with bright colors towards the top, dark at the bottom. Fourth is another graph, but this shows saturation level. A palette with mostly high saturated colors will look cute and vibrant like a children's cartoon, while a mostly desaturated palette will look dull and depressing, which sounds bad, but it might be the style you're after. Or you might want to find a well-balanced palette with a good number of high, middle, and low saturated colors. Fifth and sixth, spheres and cubes. One of the first things I typically draw when testing a palette are these two basic shapes. Even if your game is not 3D, these 3D shapes are a great way to test how your brain perceives the colors in terms of light and shadow. The spheres automatically create groupings of two similar hues, while the cubes form groups of three. Seven, dithering. This section takes your selected colors, organizes it by hue and brightness, determines neighboring colors, then creates checker pattern squares between your two solid colors so that you can see mid-tone colors that you can create in your pixel art or game using dithering effects. This will help you see which colors in your palette can be faded and blended well using dithering. Eighth and last, text contrast. A commonly overlooked but very important consideration to have when choosing a palette is what colors will be used for the text. Here we analyze all the selected colors, compare them with each other to find the best matches of contrast. Click on the arrow button on the top right to flip the text and background colors. You can compare them to select the easiest one to read, which is usually something in the middle where the contrast is not too high and not too low. While analyzing your palette, you can return to step one as many times as you'd like to refine your selection. Every part of the analysis section provides you with the color numbers to make it easier to identify them in the selection section. Once you're happy with your selected palette, you can move on to step three, color arrangement. We pre-fill this grid of 16 colors with the order that you selected them in, but now you are free to move them around in any order you'd like. You may find blank cells in the grid, which means you selected less than 16 colors. That's fine if you want to use a more limited palette, but most likely you'll want to go back up to the selection section to choose all 16. This is why we provide a way to shrink the analysis section so it's easy to scroll between the selection and arrangement sections. Simply drag colors from here to the space you want it in the grid. You can also drag from one space on the grid to another space to easily rearrange the grid. Click on a space in the grid to remove that color, or you can clear the entire grid with this button so you can restart and arrange them yourself. You'll see a check mark up here for which colors are already on the grid. The arrangement you place your colors in here will determine the order that your color palette will be exported in, which brings us to the final section. Step 4. Export your custom color palette. 
We provide four export options. First, we generate the two lines of code you need to apply this custom palette in your Pico 8 game. Click the clipboard icon to easily copy this code, and you can paste it directly into your game. Second, we generate a standard palette file that you can download and then import easily into your favorite pixel art software or any image editing software. Third, we generate a link to the Pico 8 Education Edition that already includes the code that will initiate your custom palette. This is especially useful to test how your custom palette changes the Pico 8 editors. If you don't like the way the editors look, just come back, rearrange the colors, and the export link is already updated to test it out again. Finally, we generate a link to this web page with your custom palette encoded in the URL. Click this button to copy that link and you can then share it with others or save it somewhere for yourself to return to it easily whenever you want. And that concludes our tour of the Color Palette Studio. We hope this proves useful to all the Pico 8 artists and developers out there. And even if you don't consider yourself an artist, try it out because we've included extra information on each section, especially in the color analysis section. Just click on these little question mark buttons to open a detailed explanation of what each section does and tips for what to look for to help you choose the color palette that is right for your project. If you have more suggestions for features to add to this page or other tools that we could create, let us know in the comments. We were able to build this thanks to our supporters on Coffee, whose generosity allows us to maintain the entire website, host events, and create tutorials that are available for free. So if you like what we do, consider joining up. Check out this new Color Palette Studio page at nerdyteachers.com.